Good morning, saints of God. I give praise and honor and glory to our Father in heaven. Respect to our pastor, Pastor Billy F. Matthews Sr. And to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I just thank God for being here one more time, one more day to be able to give him the praise, honor, and glory that is due unto him. And I know many of you are probably asking yourself, why is the associate minister bringing the word on the first Sunday? Well, that's because it's not the first Sunday, it's the fifth Sunday. And we have the fourth and the fifth Sundays to bring the word. So I just thank God for allowing me to be here one more time, allowing me to be able to preach his word one more time. And I thank Pastor Matthews for allowing us to use our gifts and our talents that God has given us. Now, many of you know that Reverend Felix Lane is occupied with preparing for the homegoing celebration of his wife, sister Felicia Lane. So that's why I'm bringing the word on this morning and not he. So we just want to continually be in prayer for the Lane family and the Malloy family during this trying time. Now, if you will turn with me to Matthew, the eighth chapter, starting with verse 23, going through verse 27. And it's a very familiar scripture. So when you get there, please say amen. And since I don't know if you're saying amen or not, I'm, on, I'm going to go ahead and start reading and as if you said, amen. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep, and his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? May God have a blessing on the reading, hearing, and especially the doing of his word. And this morning I want to use as a short topic, trouble in my way. Now we all sing the song, trouble in my way, I have to cry sometime, trouble in my way, I have to moan sometime. I lay awake at night, but that's all right. Because I know that Jesus will fix it after a while. Jesus will fix it after a while. That's the problem for some of us. We don't want the trouble fixed after a while. We want the trouble fixed right now. We want the solution to our problem right now. We want to see some, some change in our life right now. We want to know what's going on. Why do we have to go through this right now? We go to church every Sunday, sometimes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Why is God punishing us? Why do we have to go through trouble? Why can't we get it fixed right now? Well, sometimes it's not as easy as right now. You know, we spend years getting into the trouble, getting ourselves into the situation that we're in, but we want God to, to fix it right now. And we'll sing the song, Lord, do it for me right now. Now, we've been disobedient for, for, for many, many years, but we want him to fix it right now, real fast and real quick. But the thing is, oftentimes the trouble in our way is not always about us. It's about showing somebody else, maybe somebody who don't believe in Jesus Christ and the pardon of their sins, somebody who may not even believe in God. Sometimes it's for them to see us, for us to be a testimony in this situation. So the longer it takes for them to believe, sometimes that's how long we have to go through situations. That's how, sometimes we have to go through trouble like that so that we could be a blessing 
to somebody else. Trouble in my way. Well, we see right here in this scripture, Jesus' disciples, the ones who have been with him from the start, they've seen the, 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 the blessings he's, he's, he's caused. He, they've seen the miracles that he's performed, but they're still in fear of this treacherous wind and water that's coming up against them. They were so afraid that they went and woke Jesus up, not realizing that Jesus is, is, is always awake. He's always there in every, every trial and tribulation, every situation, he's there and he knows what's going on. Jesus just needed some rest from all the other things that were going on around him and all throughout the land. So it says in, when the water came up against them, they went and woke Jesus up and said, Lord, wake up. What are we going to do? We're about to perish. The wind's about to blow the boat over. The water is about to sink us up. What are we going to do? And Jesus woke up. He said, oh, ye of little faith. Ye of little faith. That's the problem with, 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 with many Christians. The trouble is not the wind. The trouble is not the, 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 the water. The trouble is having so little faith that they don't believe that even Jesus being there with them on that boat is in control of the situation. All they knew was he was asleep and they were about to drown. Oh, ye of little faith. Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. That's all it took was for Jesus to, to, to say, uh, peace, be still. Now, it, that doesn't say that in this particular scripture, but in Mark, it said that Jesus said, peace, be still. And the wind stopped and the water stopped, stopped coming into the boat. That's all it took. And all we have to do is believe, believe it and receive it, as we like to say. Believe that he, that he can speak to the wind and the rain and that it will happen, that it will stop. But the disciples, why was it so hard for them to believe, knowing that all the things that Jesus could do, knowing all the things that he had done, knowing that, that, that he could fix it for them right then. Well, we have to look at the word trouble. And the dictionary in the verb sense says that trouble is something that causes distress or anxiety. Stress, dis distress or anxiety. And oftentimes we're not thinking about Jesus in when situations arise. We might say Jesus, but we're trying to figure out, a, fig, figure a way to get out of the situation right then and there. But that's all we have to do is call on the name of Jesus. And if it's meant for us to get out of that situation unscathed, un, un, unharmed, unblistered, Jesus can speak and say, peace and be still. But oftentimes the trouble is not what's going on. It's what's going on in our minds and in our hearts. It says, oh, ye of little faith. In other words, he says, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all know everything that I've done up to this point. Y'all have been with me. and Y'all don't think that I can, that I can handle some, some wind and some rain. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. Oftentimes we get caught up leaning to our own understanding because there's no way that any man can just say, peace, be still, when behave, or any, any, any mortal thing and the trial, the situation is going to be handled. But we're not dealing with any ordinary man. We're dealing with the son of the, of the one and only God, of the almighty God. We're dealing with Jesus, the Christ, the mighty lamb of God. And he can fix, he can deal with any situation that's going on in our life. All we have to do is believe that the trouble can get out of our way. Now Jesus woke up. He calmed the storm. He stopped the storm. Peace be still. And the winds behave. Don't you know that he can heal anything in your life? He can fix any situation in your life, any trial, any tribulation that you're going through, any 
anything that's troubling your heart. He can be your heart fixer. He, anything that's confusing your mind, he'll be your mind regulator. Anything that's causing you to cry, he'll dry all your tears. Anything that, that's troubling you on the inside, he can get it out right then and there. But like I said earlier, sometimes we have to go through things for somebody else. We say that we are children of Christ. There are certain things that we have to go through that's not going to be for us. It's going to be for somebody else. And you might say, well, why don't he let them go through it? Because they may not be strong enough to go through it. He needs somebody. He needs one of his children to, to be the example, to set the example, to go through those trials and tribulation so that somebody will believe that he is the son of God, the son of man, that he is the Christ, that he is the heart fixer, the mind regulator, the burden bearer, the heavy load sharer, that he is the one who can fix any trial or tribulation. Trouble in my way. Uh, many of y'all know a few years back, I was in the middle of a tornado. And the thing about me, I guess I can say, I'm too nosy to, to be worried because the situation wasn't like I, I've always heard that a tornado was. I didn't hear it sound like a, a train. All I heard was trees breaking and branches breaking. And yes, I prayed. I prayed for, for a safety for, uh, for me and my son, but I was being nosy. I was trying to see what was actually going on because I wanted my testimony to be a true testimony. I wanted to tell it just like it was, just like it happened. So if some, somebody else that I knew was going through that, I can tell them, you, you pray. All you do is stop and pray because you have the, 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 the trouble fixer with you. No, he was not, he's not going to be laying there on your couch or in your bed with you like he was laying in the, in the bottom of the boat. But he is with you. He said, lo, I am with you all, until the end of the, of the earth. So we just have to believe that Jesus is the trouble fixer, that Jesus is the one who can calm the rage and see that Jesus is the one who can fix where you hurt it. He, Jesus is the one who can do anything but fail. Now, when they saw that Jesus just spoke to the wind and he spoke to the water and it stopped, then they had another question. What matter of man is this that can just speak and the wind and the rain will stop. Now that's where it comes in. He's not just any matter of man. He's not just any man. He is Jesus Christ, the mighty lamb of God. The one who we know, but they did not know yet, came down through 42 generations. Now they saw him performing the miracles. They, they, they saw him walking the streets of Jerusalem. That much they knew, but they didn't know that he was all seeing, all knowing, almighty, the mighty lamb of God. He came down through 42 generations and he healed the sick and he raised the dead and he caused the uh, lame men to get up and walk. And he, uh, he caused dumb men to be able to talk and he, he, he healed the sick and he raised the dead and, and he let mean men put nails in his hand and spikes in his feet. That's who we're talking about, the, the trouble fixer. He, 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 allowed them to hang him out on the cross on Calvary's hill. They didn't know this at the time. They had to see it to believe it. They put nails in his hands and spikes in his feet. And he hung out on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. And he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and he died. The Bible says that he died. See, they didn't have the Bible to read back then. They had to go off of word of mouth. They had to see it from themselves. And, and, and the Bible tells us that, that he hung out on that cross from the six of the ninth hour and he died. But then they took him down and they laid him in a borrowed tomb. Now, some of them actually saw him in that tomb and they know what a miraculous thing was when he was no longer in that tomb. And then he laid in that tomb all night Friday and all night Saturday, but then early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth. And, and, and the Bible said that, that, that there was things going on in the land that, that could have caused trouble. It, could have been trouble for some for somebody, but 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 they believed that who he said he was who he said he was from the time that he got there. So they caused no fear, it caused no confusion. They were just waiting for it to be seen and waiting for it to be known. He got up early Sunday morning with all power in heaven and earth. 
in his hand. So why is it us Christians, us believers who can read the Bible, who we see the movies that have been made and all the portrayals of Jesus Christ, the mighty Lamb of God, and it's hard to believe that he will allow trouble to stay in our way unnecessarily. Jesus Christ got up out of that grave with all power in heaven and earth, and he continued to work for us. He continued to work for them. He continued to do all the things that he said he would do, all the things that God has a, a commissioned him to do. Now, if anybody should have been fearful, fearful, it should have been Jesus Christ. He should say, why do I have to die for their sins, Father? Why do I have to, 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 to die for the things that they're doing and the things that they've done? But he didn't say that. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do before he was crucified and killed. He was still working on our behalf, even though he was going through all of that. Now, we go through minor things in God's eyes, but we think that they're major things in our eyes. And we still won't give him the praise. We still won't give him the, the glory that is due to him. We still won't lift him up. We still won't uh, go out and evangelize and tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus Christ because we know he got up. We believe he got up. We can read that he got up. So why don't we get up for him? Why don't we go out on the limb for Jesus Christ and tell somebody just call on the name of Jesus in your time of trial and tribulation and you will be saved. You will be healed. Your situation will be fixed. We know it takes more than that to be saved. That's a, 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 a slip of the tongue. But why don't we go out and tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus Christ so that when they're in, in, in situations that they can't handle, they'll know who to call on. Yeah, it's good to be able to call on, on, on Pastor Matthews. It's able to be able to, to call on Sister Matthews, but I'd rather call on Jesus in my times of trial and tribulation. And then he will instruct Pastor Matthews and Sister Matthews if, if I need to call them on the way that they can handle the situation, the way that they can help me. See, Jesus is not going to come and, 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 and lift you up, pick you up and place you on that rock to stay right then. He might, but it, 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 the Bible said there's a time and a place for him to come back. So he's going to instruct somebody else on how to help you. He's going to let you know who needs to help you. But then after we get received that help, we have to be able to go out and tell somebody about Jesus Christ, how he helped us, how he picked us up out and, and placed us on a, a solid rock to stay, how he, he took, took us out of that, 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 that fiery pit, how he say, took us out of the lion's den from, from the, the snare of the, of the lions in the lion's den, how he changed us, picked us up and changed us and rearranged our lives. Then we can tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know about you, and I know this was short, and I know it was sweet, but I'm just glad that I have a Savior who continually saves me. He didn't just die that, that one time and get up and save my, my soul. He saved my life every day of, of my life. He puts his arms around me. He loves me every day of my life. He protects my family every day of my life. Even though I don't always act right, even though I'm not always good, even though I'm not always obedient, I still trust in the Lord for the things that I need. May God bless you. May God keep you.